a lot of us refer to this place simply as the Breaks. I find myself making a trek here multiple times a year. It's a very unique landscape, so incredibly different from the mountains we live in just four hours away. You also might pull a giant prehistoric looking fish out of that river. Paddlefish, or as Easterners call them, spoonbills. It still blows my mind that a freshwater fish in the western US can grow this big. They are just so far from the norm of most of the fish that I'm used to. What are we doing? Yep. I'm rigging up a catfish rod. I think uh, Dale's rigging up a paddlefish rod. So, in Montana, we have a paddlefish season, and this year on this river that we're at, it's a draw. So you have to apply for a tag, and only people who drew a keep tag for a paddlefish are allowed to fish for paddlefish this year. On this trip, we have two newcomers to the breaks. We have one of our video editors, David, and our field producer, Dale. This is a whole new experience for both of them, and I'm excited to see what they think. Uh, I did a lot of fishing when I was probably a teenager and as a kid, mostly trout fishing. So I was kind of getting back in the saddle, seriously. But this was by far the largest fish I had ever aimed to catch. Got that set up. Cool. Slip sinker, bang, worm on that, huck it on the bottom. So growing up in Florida, I had a lot of angling experience, offshore uh, fishing, a lot of freshwater experience as well, catching you know tarpon, um, mahi mahi, kingfish, everything like that. So I was really excited when I drew this tag because, I mean, this is just a giant freshwater fish that I've never even seen before in my life. Also joining us is bait casting guru Michael Parenti. He caught his first paddlefish last year, but this year he's going to be filming and he's got the catfish rods on lockdown. Also dropping in will be my brother Jonathan and my dad Brian. Don't want to get hooked by that. No, we don't. That would hurt a lot. One of the coolest parts about the breaks are these big cottonwood river bottoms. So many areas like this have been converted to farmland, so it feels like you're going back in time to be able to be immersed in a largely intact habitat. So kind of my expectations was, I mean, everything that I've heard is you're just going to have to work your butt off and just keep casting and keep casting and keep snagging, and eventually you're going to hook into one. Because of the nature of paddlefish, you can't just uh, put some bait and hook them and um, or just wait for them to bite. So you have to constantly be uh, in motion trying to snag these fish and it's just a lot of like physical activity and effort. So paddlefish are filter feeders, meaning they only consume tiny little zooplankton. So bait and lures are of no use when trying to hook into one of these giants. The main method used to catch them is snagging. Now, for most species, this is not a legal method to take, but for paddlefish, it is legal, and it's pretty much the only way that you're going to reliably pull one out of this murky water. We just got there, and I'm just trying to show David how to fish for paddlefish, and then I hook into a fish. <laughs> All right, somebody's got to land this thing. Actually hooking into a paddlefish is no easy task. At first glance, dragging a giant dot treble hook with a five ounce weight in tow seems like it might give the angler an unfair advantage. In reality, it often takes hundreds of casts and thousands of twisting, snagging attempts before you actually bump into one. And when you do, you better ignore your fatigued muscles, set that hook deep, and hold on for a ride. I wish I could say that I worked that hard this year, that I spent countless hours casting, but this time I got lucky. What were you doing? You're just <laughs> just explaining to David how to... Yeah, I was just trying to show David how to cast the rod. It's right there. It's right out here. If I have to get out there and go swim it, do you need closer? Yeah, it's out here. Okay. Nope, we gotta keep it there. And that fish just dives down deep and it just sits there. And I get like, I don't know what to do. Like I couldn't gain on him. I tried to lean back into the rod, couldn't gain on him at, at all. Just sat there forever. It was the most tiring fight that I've ever had on a fish by far. 
<laughs> it's a good one. It's a good fight. <laughs> Oh, there it is. Grab my tail. Don't grab the line. I'll admit, it's pretty barbaric how we catch these fish. You're putting a big ass hook into the flesh of a fish and dragging it out of the water. But again, that's pretty much the only way you can do it. He's down here by this next set of roots. Oh, yeah, Dale. Go get him, buddy. Watch the hook. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm in waist deep water. I don't really have a spot to stand. After I kind of regained my strength and the fish tired out a little bit, Michael and Dale jump into the river and are as close to the fish as they can get, and they're going to try to land it. Yeah, he's hooked in the back, or in the front, I think. But it's a very tricky landing spot because it's a steep cut bank. There's nothing to grab onto, really. No? Here. If you can get him by the tail. Put this rope around him. Okay. Yeah, if you can get this rope around the tail, she won't go anywhere. Trying to get somewhere to just to stand for a second. But I guess it's not gonna happen. Michael and I are down in the water with it, trying to wrangle it. Yeah. Dude's deep right there. Yeah. <laughs> I just had to take my shirt off for the, for the audience. <laughs> for the audience. This is absolutely insane. I almost want to just grab it. Well, yeah, but you can't. I don't know. Should have brought the gas. Okay, cheers. Finally, after it seemed like forever, probably 15 minutes. It's on the surface and it's a, it's an absolute rodeo. <laughs> Those guys finally get a hand on it. They, I think both ended up underwater at some point. I don't know where the hook is. Where's the hook? I got it. Yeah. As soon as the fish surfaces, you kind of get an idea of how big it is and what you're up against. And it's a high stress situation because you have a giant treble hook with 65 pound test line leaned into it. If that hook comes out and you're between the rod and the fish, you're gonna have a real bad day. <laughs> and like, so it's, it's terrifying. And I mean, like Michael's going under the water. I'm going under the water, like treading water, just kind of freaking out. I got it. I'm doing. Yeah. And then we grab a hold of this thing, and I mean, it's just this prehistoric dinosaur that you're looking at. She's big. She's big, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey, thanks for holding the hand, man. Appreciate it. Ready? Ready? That hook's right there. Got her? Holy smokes. Dude, she's big. That's a big one. <laughs> Somebody give me some help. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. I'm just admiring the fish here. We got the fish, got it landed, and uh, caught my biggest fish that I've ever caught by far. Holy. That was a great start to the trip. Where we're at now, we're as far west as paddlefish ever make it, but they exist downstream throughout the Missouri-Mississippi drainage. In addition to this fishery, there's only one other place they existed in the world, the Yangtze River in China. Unfortunately, the Chinese paddlefish has recently been declared extinct. But the U.S. population is enough to support angler harvest in several states. It's a monster, guys. <laughs> I got it. It's the big one. Yeehaw. I mean that. Oh, Marcus with the scoop. There you go. Teamwork. Perfect. That's how you do it. Perfect eater. Nice.
Mr. Hockey yeah. drew a moose tag. I don't know if we want to let everybody know that, but he did. <laughs> I, I didn't know if you'd notice that. <laughs> How's it going? Good. Where's the paddlefish? Really? Yeah. <laughs> My dad is the one who initially taught me how to catch a paddlefish. I remember being so intrigued by the photos in his old albums of these crazy looking fish. And I was so pumped when I finally caught my first one. Kind of go like this, and then like. It was going good, yeah. There you go. Getting that bell off. Like a pro. Yeah, I like your get up you got on right now. It's a nice fishing get up. Is he on? Let him take it and then take it and then set the hook. Dude, I feel like they feel our energy. There he is. Ooh, you got him! Oh my gosh! What a booter! Look at that thing! Look at that! <laughs> I heard that thing from a mile away. I don't know, probably an hour or so after Marcus had caught that one, I hooked into one. Tip up! Tip up! I told you! I was yeah. doing psychology in him! We were trying to get a snag on, on film, but now Dale just had to go... Oh god. He's not even taking drag. Oh! You know, not knowing what to expect. I had my drag super, super tight. And I start fighting this fish and it goes to make a big run and poof, like I pop it off. That's what I, I did. <laughs> I put the drag tight. Too tight. I hooked him like right there, like real close. Dang. Dang. I had the barrel swivel going to monofilm it wrapped around the hook and then to the sinker. So I only had 40 pound test as opposed to having my hook on the 65 pound braid. Look, look, look where it broke. Right at my barrel swivel. Rookie mistake, I guess, right? Got it hooked up, boys! This time, I've got the proper setup. I start working my drag. I'm fighting this fish back and forth and pump up and then reel down and pump up and reel down to kind of work that fish. He's right down there where you caught yours. Yeah. Oh, it's starting to come up. You're just holding on, waiting for that fish to tire up and, and come up to the surface. He's right there. Oh, it's a good one. I got you. I will, I will. You think you're gonna keep this one? Uh, I, I mean, I, I'd like to see it, but it looks like it's pretty big. Marcus just dives in the water. <laughs> He's in! He's in! Like, hey, I'm gonna let the master do this. I mean, he's done this a lot. I'm just over here, just hanging onto the rod, waiting. Right there below you. Yep, watch yourself, dude. Right there below you. Nice, nice. Oh boy. All right, watch your feet. Go slack. You got him. Yeah. Nice, Marcus. 
And in that point, I was able to lay down the rod and get down there with him, which is really exciting to kind of like be down there with that fish. I just don't want to leave my no. hand on that. Put that on the tail, man. Or you got it? Yep. <laughs> yep, he's going back in. <laughs> I'm just trying not to lose my, uh, my crocs here. You got it? Woo! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Instantly, you know, already seeing Marcus's, and at that point we didn't know how big his was, but mine was roughly the same size. And I'm like, okay, we're good. I mean, this, this is what I drew a paddlefish tag for. I, I was extremely excited. I mean, couldn't be happier at that point. Unfortunately, this year, due to COVID, they don't have a Creel uh, survey guy. So Glenn, Glenn is not there to sample and measure our fish. So it's all self-reporting. So we're gonna head down. They have a little station where you can take your jaw sample, weigh your fish, get a measurement, length measurement, and give FWP some data, and they'll send back a, send you an email and tell you how old your fish is after they uh, tested in the lab. Oh. 92. There's been recent efforts to better understand the status of paddlefish in Montana. Luckily, the data suggests that the two populations of paddlefish in the state are fairly stable. They are very long-lived, slow to reproduce fish, and a species of concern in Montana. So Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks is keeping a close eye on them, watching and regulating angler harvest. After submitting our data, we were later informed that Dale's fish was 30 years old. My fish was 38. Pretty crazy to think about. That fish is older than I am. I've witnessed a number of fish come out of this murky water, but these are among the biggest. Big females loaded with eggs. High demand for these eggs in the form of caviar was a major contributing factor in the demise in China. And I have to admit, I find this a bit ironic because I struggled to give the stuff away. For me, I'm going to keep trying to learn about the fishery and following the state's guidelines. And those guidelines right now are that the population can sustain some harvest. Looking for catfish now. We got one catfish earlier today, but nothing so far tonight. She's raging. I'm gonna try to get this lighter fluid away from here. Well, today was quite, quite entertaining. Uh, two big fish down. That was the biggest paddlefish I've ever caught. Paddlefish on the birch barrel, which was really good. But tomorrow, there are three tag holders left. Tomorrow, my brother Jonathan is gonna show up. David still got a tag, my dad still got a tag. So, it's only gonna get better. Back in my college days, I worked in this area as a biological technician. One of the things that I got to do was help excavate fossils from an Elasmosaurus, a marine reptile that lived here 70 million years ago. While it's crazy to think that a giant sea creature used to swim around here, it's even crazier to me to think that around 70 million years ago is also when paddlefish started showing up in the fossil record. How'd you sleep? Slept really well, actually. It was pretty good. We tried some of the the meat on the paddlefish last night. It was really good, so I'm excited to come in and hopefully fill my freezer with a big old fish. So, 100 pounder. That's what I'm looking for. 100 pounder. Making that cafe.
you know, for Randy, usually I'm working at the office uh, behind a computer screen. Uh, but because of the coronavirus, I have been working from home a ton. And uh, on top of that, you know, my wife and I, we had our first child in February. It's been a lot to juggle uh, working from home and taking care of a, an infant. And so this was really like the first trip away from my wife and my daughter. <laughs> Man, I got my arm's so sore. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. What do you think, she'll work? Oh yeah. She'll keep. Pallid sturgeon are another fish species that has been swimming around for 70 million years. Unfortunately, they haven't been doing great and are classified as an endangered species. The reason for their demise is no mystery. We as humans dam the rivers, destroying the habitat and the characteristics that are required for pallids to successfully breed. I got him. Sweet. I got him. It's a big one. Oh, it's not a big one. Oh, dude, it's a sturgeon. I need, I need, I kind of need your help here. That's the first sturgeon I've ever caught. Congrats. So Marcus is gonna explain to us what this is. This is a pallid sturgeon. A little planter. They plant a ton of these in the river because they're endangered. Super cool. Um, but yeah, there's a ton of these little guys, little planters. Pallid sturgeon. Biologists have been trying to figure out ways to save them without tearing out the dams, but for now, the mitigation has been to captively breed them and stock them into the rivers. So there's quite a few of these little guys swimming around now. But unfortunately, the mature adults are not breeding. Guys, I got something. David, you got one? I thought so. Oh, you'll know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I got it. Oh, is wow. it a paddle fish? Tip up, tip up, tip up. Hey, it's it's coming up, it's coming up river. Real, real, real. Is it still on there? No, I don't think so. Dang it! Oh. Oh, the high thing is like. Uh, yeah. What happened, Michael? Oh, Hook came off. Dang. Yeah, I hit it at first and then like... It feels like a log. Well, it feels like a log and then I started reeling it in and it felt like there's nothing on there anymore. And so well, I was I like... I think he swam towards you yeah. for a second and then he like... And, and then, then he, he just... Then he's like... <laughs> so on that second day, you know, after I'd caught that really nice 93 pounder, I was like, you know, what? I, I want to fish again. I mean, at some point, you know, you're, you're here to fish. You might as well just throw a couple more lines out. Yeah. Got him. Yeah. And on my second cast, I hooked in to another one. Oh, oh dude. Oh, dude. On the nose. It's a big one, too. So now the fight's on again. And I mean, it's it's just so much fun because you're just snagging and snagging and snagging. And all of a sudden, bam, you're just, you're you're locked into something. Ready? Here we go. Here it is. Oh, wow. That's a good one. It's all big. Again, Marcus dives in there after that fish. Once that he's got a good hold on it, I got down there with it and was able to look at it. But we were not able to take it out of the water. We're not able to weigh it. All right, it's gotta remain partly or partially submerged. You got, time. you got, uh, right there by your hand, by your hand. I'll hold on to it while you unhook it. So in Montana, when you draw a keep tag, you're also allowed to snag and release because science shows that um, snagging them has almost a 0% mortality rate. It, if you release them, keep them in the water, you know, keep, keep them moving and everything like that. Cool. Here he goes. 
<laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> that was actually really cool. Yeah, <laughs> that was cool. My brother Jonathan also drew a tag this year, so he's going to be joining us in the middle of the trip. Oh, wow. Oh, God. Ew! Another species, another delicious species. The most delicious subspecies. Or a sauger. Sauger. The fishery here is crazy diverse consisting of a mixture of native and non-native fish. Throwing a slip sinker and a worm to the bottom will most likely produce a stone cat or channel catfish, but you never know what you're gonna pull out. You gonna eat that thing, huh? Have a little fish and chips today. One thing a lot of the fish have in common though is being very tasty. Right here we got our yeah, sauger. Look at that here, it looks like some drum. Alright, we want some fish. Sauger is really good. Close sauger? Yep. yep. Dave, you better get in this. If he, is he close? Yeah. Walk him down, walk him down. Reel in that rod. Reel in all the rods? Yeah. Check for the hole. Watch that bite with the rod. He come around. I think it's a decent he, one. He look, look, he look pretty good. Good male, I think. <laughs> it, or it's, it's either a male or a female that's dropped rig. Got it. <laughs> what do you guys think? It's up to you. It's up to you, man. <laughs> I mean, I can just keep it. You're gonna keep it? All right. Yeah. Paddlefish meat. Last time I had a lot of paddlefish, but yeah. I don't need 90 pounds of this stuff. Sweet, <laughs> dude. <laughs> nice. Got it? Well, I don't know. Yeah, you got it. Oh, he looks Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Oh, no. <laughs> that didn't work. All right, I'm just gonna carry it up. It's cool enough. baby. <laughs> nice. Way to go, John. Someone All grab You know, I was just exhausted. You know, at the end of the second day, everything hurts so bad. David, I mean, he, he just fished nonstop. I would, I would say that he probably, between all the other four anglers that were out here, he's cast at least two to three times more than everybody else combined. Yeah. <laughs> David's going for forecast next year. <laughs> I was having trouble going to sleep because my hands hurt. I could barely move my hands at all. Um, could barely lift my arms. Um, and I knew that the next morning I had to just go out again for like another six hours. You know, you go, you just cast through the pain um, and hope that you it pays off at the end. <laughs> the, the, the disappointment beetle. Yeah. <laughs> It's a 
pretty fancy meal. I just threw a bunch of stuff on a grill. <laughs> Not that fancy. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> and we're going to bed now. How's that bacon strip? Oh, closure. <laughs> <laughs> you cut too. Yeah. That was he hammered that. <laughs> that. I can't believe that. That's the way a bell is supposed to ring. <laughs> that was crazy. This guy is our best bell ringer of the whole trip. <laughs> Little gold eye. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> ah, it does not feel good. <laughs> so on the last day, my dad had been fishing a decent amount and with uh, little success. He yells at us to come get ready to help. Where's he at? He's down there, took a lot of drag. It kind of does the same thing where it dives down to the bottom and just holds there and he's not moving much. <sighs> Tail hooked him probably. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> it's a huge fish. <sighs> Where are you? Come on, buddy. Eventually, fish surfaces and we, we get eyes on it, and it is by far the biggest paddlefish that I have ever seen. Is it a big one? That is absolutely giant. Can you get there? That thing's over 100 pounds. I bet you. I am confident in saying that that fish is well over 100 pounds. Anyone got that noose? I don't know. Get that noose. Hold on, bud. You gotta shorten it up. Come. I don't know. No! It broke. It broke? Huh? Broke. And it just drifts away down into the depths of the of the river. It was it was very sad. At least we don't have to clean him, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that thing was huge. That was insane. That was a very, very large fish. God, I couldn't believe it. Line just went. <sighs> you know, sometimes you can put all the effort in the world in something. And uh, if you're not at the right place at the right time, things just aren't gonna go your way. And that's pretty much what happened this time. Just could not hook one. And uh, it's frustrating, but uh, uh, at the end of the day, you know, I'm happy I came and it was worth it. And I, I really do look forward to doing more trips like this in the future. I mean, th this is a trip that now I, I wanna do it more. And even if I don't have a keep tag, I think that just one catching them is really fun, but also just the camaraderie and hanging out with friends is just a ton, a ton of fun. I hope this fishery continues to thrive and sustain recreational angling. It's such a unique experience and it's just cool knowing that a 70 million year old, 100 pound fish is swimming around in the freshwater of the Western United States. At the end of the day, three of the five tag holders are bringing paddlefish steaks home. It's pretty unique to have giant fish steaks and caviar, so it's fun to share it with others. Yeah, fish. Mmm. Oh, 
Michael loves fish. Oh, we experimented with several cooking methods, all of which I thought were pretty dang good. What's your favorite one? My favorite is probably the blackened. Then the grill and the smoke are like 2A and 2B. Really hard to tell. And then the fried. But I don't eat the, the one with the pucky on it. There's a big one. I like the smoked and the blackened. Uh, I'm going with the smoked. Same with RJ. And then blackened, followed by the grilled, uh, then fried. Well, actually, then I like this, like the fried least. Blackened first, then the baked then the smoked, then the fried, then the grilled. I had to pick. I'd pick the blackened today. 